Okay, hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, this is now Fujimori from Kyushu University. Okay, can you hear? You? Yes. Yeah, thank you. So uh, it's time to start the 10th US Asia meeting. And, and this meeting is, uh, uh, this, today is the anniversary meeting, uh, 10th meeting. Okay, and uh, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for participating in this conference in this uh, difficult situation. And uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, COVID-19 is still increasing all over the world. But in Japan, and uh, relatively now, relatively safe, okay? And I hope in the near future, uh, we, we would like to go to a foreign country, including your country, okay? But uh, meanwhile, <clears throat> and this teleconference is very important to, uh, to teach each other and to share the uh, intervention in the US, okay? And uh, today, uh, as you can see the uh, program, and uh, there are newcomers in this uh, universe, in this meeting from, uh, from Nigeria, Nigeria. And uh, Dr. Um, Nigeria from the University of Niger Technic Hospital, can you hear? If possible, please uh, make your introduction yourself, if possible. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Okay. Please. Yeah. Yes. I'm Dr. Chukwe Mecca a consultant, general surgeon, and surgeon endoscopist. I also do laparoscopic surgery. So I'm glad to be here. There's another person from the University of Nigeria as well. I'm sure he's going to introduce himself after me. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, let's move uh, to the presentation. Uh, there are two presenters. And the first one is uh, from uh, Chore Hospital, Dr. Jun. And the second uh, presenter is uh, myself from Kyushu University. Okay, Dr. Jun, uh, please start your uh, presentation. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. I'd like to share my screen. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jun from Chore Hospital. And today, I'm very happy to uh, share our works. Uh, my topic today is uh, EUS Guy Biliary Drainage at Jerai Hospital. And uh, Jerai Hospital is in the Ho Chi Minh City in the South Vietnam. This is one of the biggest hospital in the South Vietnam with more than 2,500 beds. And for the introduction, you know, the ESB is the first line therapy for bowel, uh, I mean, eye and malignant obstruction. And the successful rate is about uh, more than 90%, except uh, the tumor invasion of the duodenum, uh, failure in cannulation or in the sets for babila. And um, ESCB also have the complication rate up to 15%, including both uh, ESCB pancreatitis, uh, uh, bleeding, perforation, uh, cholangitis. And traditionally, the PTBD is alternative therapy in case of foul ESCB. But remember, but, uh, remember that the, the complication rate is very high, 25 to uh, 35%. And uh, EUSBD first introduced by uh, uh, Giovanni Ni in 2001. And uh, recently, EUSBD uh, considered have the equal effect, effective and safer than uh, percutaneous approach. And a few years ago, we all know that is the two way to accept the BD uh, biliary system uh, the first uh, transgastric uh, set into the, the left hepatic duct, and the, uh, the second one is uh, transdurinum to uh, CBD. And nowadays, uh, we also know many uh, techniques 
to uh, 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 to do the USBD like uh, uh, go better training through the uh, duodenum wall, or we can uh, train the the right hepatic duct through the uh, duodenum. And uh, in Chennai Hospital, we are using the uh, Olympus system with uh, uh, the nightingale needle, and we need to have the, the fluoroscopy or C arm. And uh, we use uh, cytotome for tract dilation, and uh, we do uh, uh, stenting. Uh, for uh, about the stand, we are using the uh, the Hana Rose stand, a uh, hybrid stand, and uh, for the um, uh, US CDS, we are using the the numbers, uh, uh, plumber stand. And this is the our results at Chai Hospital. Due, uh, due to uh, COVID-19, the number of patients are not many, but we uh, in three years, we have the 19 patients uh, who fell ESCB and performed EUSBD. And uh, in 19 patients, we fell uh, one case due to the intervening vessel because of the, uh, the patient had a lot of collateral vessel. So we cannot find a way to accept to the CBD. And uh, we, as I said, uh, uh, we have to uh, done the uh, EUS CDS six cases and uh, about the uh, EUS HES eight cases. And uh, we also perform four cases of uh, EUS tummy book. About the complication, <clears throat> there is no uh, major complication related to the procedure. Uh, we had two patients of colonchitis, but uh, managed to uh, successful by antibiotic and no stand migration. In EUSCD Act, we had six cases. Uh, the main indication for EUSCD Act is distal CBD switcher. Uh, <clears throat> 6K, uh, including the uh, three case of uh, failed cannulation and failed cases, uh, we cannot assess uh, uh, across the uh, papilla due to the uh, duodenal seizure. About the uh, technical suspect is uh, six of seven cases because of uh, uh, one case have the intervening uh, vessel. No major complication, and on case we use uh, lamps. This is the uh, the how we do C uh, EUS CDS. Uh, we are set into the CBD using the nightingale needle on the EUS guidance uh, after <coughs> check uh, to the uh, geogram. We use uh, the the cytotome for track dilation and stand placement. This is video uh, show our procedure we performed three years ago. Uh, first, we are set into the CBD by using the uh, nightingale needle and we do the track dilation uh, with the cytotome and after that we deploy the stand. On six case of EUSCDS, we use the the plumber stand. The plumber stand uh, with the twelve diameter in diameter. Uh, about the stand selection, we have many kind of stand, but. Uh, Nowadays, uh, the lamps on hyper stand are favorable stand in CDS. Uh, another uh, uh, RCT uh, comparison between the EUSBD and ERCP from Ban Group. Uh, the results show that uh, the technical set and clinical set are equal between the two groups. So uh, EUSPD also is the practical alternative to ERCD for primary biliary compression in pancreatic cancer. And in our uh, uh, our uh, cases, the, the 
the time for uh, stand patencies is very long in the EUS CDS. Uh, some stand uh, patency in two years. Uh, we also do the EUS uh, rendezvous through the CDS. We have three cases uh, that uh, fell in cannulation and the technical success in, in the in three cases and no uh, a major complication and we do uh, perform blood distance or SM, SMS. This is the picture show our uh, rendezvous techniques. In this case, we are using the blood distance and an, another case, we are using the SMS. With the EUS HES, we have eight cases. Uh, the indication in this uh, procedure is mainly uh, in the higher biliary structure. And uh, in seven cases, and uh, one case had the middle cholangio, uh, cholangio, uh tumor. And technical success is uh, nearly 100%. And we have two cases have uh, cholangitis. And uh, in this uh, situation, we use the hybrid stand with the ACM in land. This is case we have the uh, tumor in middle CBD. So we uh, have to do C uh, EUS CDI in this case. And we also do the EUS rendezvous through the uh, uh, HVS, and um, there is no complication. This is a picture of this case. So in the systemic review, the EUS BD is very safe. The techni technical set and uh, clinical set is uh, more than 90%. And Complication rate is about 25%. And e, uh, BTBD is uh, associated with the high adverse uh, uh, event rates, uh, including the bleeding by leak, and uh, especially the external uh, drainage may uh, worsen the patient quality of life. So, uh, uh, in the Systemic review and meta analyze uh, in uh, comparison between the USBD and BTBD. Uh, the results show that the clinical set uh, and the technical set are the equal between the two groups, but the adverse events are lower in the USBD group. And another review showed that USBD. Uh, and PTBD is so equivalent technical success, but EUSPD was associated with the better clinical success, less post uh, uh, procedure at adverse events, and low re intervention rates. And uh, EUSPD was more cost effective. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, have a case uh, presentation. Uh, this patient had the, the pancreatic cancer, uh, unresectable pancreatic cancer, uh, were, were, were on uh, ESCB uh, stenting. A few months later, the patient had uh, occurred the, the, the neuronal uh, obstruction, and we also do the play the, the neuronal stand. But few months later, the patient occurred uh, the chronic, but the uh, we fell in ESCB uh, because of the urinal obstruction stenosis. So we do EUS. Uh, luckily, uh, that is the communication between the dry uh, duct and the lab duct. So uh, we do EUS, uh, HES, and uh, the, the chronic uh, resolve very quickly. Another case, uh, the patient had a malignant hyalur biliary fissure, um, type for uh, um, hyalur tumor, and we plan to endoscopic drainage. 
and in the MRI show that the, there is the completely obstruction in the left hepatic duct, and this is the, the tumor in hilum. Hilum, and uh, we plan to uh, do ESCP in the right hepatic uh, duct, and uh, also EUS, HES in the left hepatic duct. But uh, when we perform ESCP, we fail to uh, in assess the, into the biliary uh, uh, duct on the uh, precursor, and we change the the plan. We uh, change to uh, use the EUS uh, scope to do EUS HES. And in this case, you can see that uh, intrahepatic duct uh, dilated. Um, and uh, we punch the position uh, for puncturing is at B3. B3 and after cholangiogram, uh, we dilate the, the tract by using the cytotome like this. And after that, we place uh, the stem. With this stand, uh, the, the, the advantage of this stand is that uh, that can re, uh, prevent the uh, stand migration. And usually we have to uh, have the two or three cm in the, the stand in the stomach. This is the, the fluoroscopy. And uh, five days later, we uh, do e the second ESCP. Uh, this is uh, the video so the, the stand book well and uh, we also do pre-cut again and uh, luckily we are set into the CBD and collagen uh, show that there is the, uh, the obstruction in the right hepatic duct and uh, after spinterotomy we uh, take the stand in the right side this year, and so uh, in, with the right side, we do the ESCB, and with the left side, we uh, do the EUS and HUS. So, uh, endoscopic biliary drainage in the high literature is uh, very complex. And we also have to remember the percentage of liver volume to drainage, at least uh, 50%. Uh, there are many controversies between the PTBD and ESCB for biliary, uh, for higher um, biliary obstruction. And uh, the new concept is uh, the complete drainage has the better, um, better clinical outcome in comparison with the incomplete drainage. And uh, nowadays we have the ESCB and EUS combination for drainage. So this is the pictures from uh, uh, Brown Chai group about the, uh, we can do the hepato, uh, hepatico urinostomy uh, procedure in case the, the ESCP fail to uh, uh, set into the right uh, hepatic duct. So if the, this is the, the, the picture. So if uh, um, we can use the combination uh, of uh, ESCP and EUSPD procedure to improve the quality uh, of uh, uh, um, endoscopic drainage in management of uh, high blood structure. So, in conclusion, EUSPD uh, very safe and uh, give us more vi viable option in case where ESCB fell in uh, biliary drainage and intervention. And ESCB uh, might be reasonable uh, alternative to ESCB as the first line procedure in patient with uh, uh, um, uh, patient that fell ESCB. And uh, future uh, study should uh, address whether ESCB is the first line rather than an in combination with ESCB in patient with the malignant bile duct obstruction. So thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank you.
Okay, Professor Jim, thank you for excellent presentation and the excellent your skill and your results uh, regarding US guided video drainage. Okay, time for questions or comments. And uh, anyone, do you have any comments or question for this <coughs> presentation? Hi, Dr. Dr. Dan, uh, can you hear me? Yes, very clear. Oh, th thank you very much for, for an excellent presentation. Uh, it sounds very exciting uh, establishing a new uh, service in your hospital. My, my question is on the regarding the stent for HGS. I see that your success rate has been very quite, quite impressive, of hundred percent. Like, well, what uh, what are your go to stent? Uh, is it partially covered like GeoBar stent or fully covered or plastic stent? Uh, you mean that the, the, the stand for uh, selection for US HDS? Yes, yes. gastrostomy. Thank you. Uh, yes, in in our uh, our hospital, we are using the the Hanaru stand, uh, hybrid stand. So uh, uh, usually we use a CM lens uh, in lens uh, stand with around three uncover, three CM uncover and uh, five CM uh, with uh, fully cover. So um, the, the stand design uh, very special for EUS SVX. And stand, I think the stand prevent the, um, the, the, uh, the micro stand migration. <clears throat> okay, thank you. <clears throat> and uh, other questions or comments? Okay. So I, I have one question. So <clears throat> as you say, uh, your skill and uh, your results regarding USB is very excellent. So, but the, in Japan also, USB is the uh, second uh, BDRE procedure. Uh, only ERCB failed case, but in uh, some case, maybe first line treatment. Uh, what do your opinion in the future uh, application of this procedure? Thank you very much for your comment and question. And uh, so far, currently in, in Vietnam, in Joy Hospital, um, EUS uh, BD is the second uh, choice. Only we, we only do EUS BD after ESB fell uh, two times. And in, but uh, some patient, uh, we have the, like uh, the, the distal CBD uh, obstruction due to the malignant, uh, malignant disease like uh, um, pancreatic cancer. Uh, the, the, the time the, uh, for stand patency if it is very low, around six months to maximum nine months if we use SMS. But uh, when we do the EUS guide BD uh, CDS, I, um, some patients have the uh, stand the time of uh, stand patency is very long, up to two years. So I think uh, um, if you uh, can do EUS CDS, I think the, uh, it's very safe and uh, very quick. Uh, procedure and uh, time, the, 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 um, the stand patency uh, duration uh, is very long. So, and one more question, so, which procedure uh, you will perform when you can perform both US HGS and US CDS, which is superior? <clears throat> uh, yes. Uh, some doctor uh, are afraid of the you uh, doing the EUS HES, but in my opinion, I think both uh, both technique uh, or procedure are safe. I think. Okay, thank you. And uh, <clears throat> any other comments or question from other countries? Hi, Doctor Yang. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Long time no see. Yeah, yes, that's right. So I have one question. 
uh, congratulations for your success of the procedure. But um, if you experience any uh, uh, serious complication uh, due to uh, HGS or biliary uh, drainage during the procedure. Mm -hmm. Uh, luckily, uh, so far we don't have, but uh, in the, the, the literature, uh, there are many complications, uh, severe complications, uh, li like a stand uh, uh, migration. So uh, I think the, the luckily, I, I, we, we don't uh, have such uh, a complication, but the most Important thing I uh, I think that we have to use the the the, uh, the, the very special design uh, stand for this procedure, or if not, you can use the the SM uh, uh, um, metals uh, metal stand. So you have to put the, the very long uh, uh, long uh, stand in the stomach to prevent the stand migration. Any bleeding operations? Uh, uh, so far, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. So actually, we don't have a lens. It's not easily available. That's why uh, we are reluctant to start um, that mm -hmm. USDD. Um, yeah. What kind of lens do you use for any uh, cheaper? With the Hana Rostan, we usually use uh, the ACM uh, uh, in lens. But uh, if, uh, if you use the other stand, I think it's longer. It needs longer. Oh, and uh, some, some experts uh, said we uh, have to prepare to prevent the, the stand migration. We can use the, the, the black stand, the Bobby Tail black stand. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comment or question? Okay. <clears throat> oh, uh, it uh, <clears throat> and maybe oh, it's sorry, a mute. Doctor Chukwemeka, we cannot hear. Would you check your microphone? Uh, still not. We cannot hear. <clears throat> <clears throat> can you hear me mm. yes hello can you hear me now can you hear me clearly now we can hear hello yes, we can hear you you can hear me now yes all right so um thank you very much for the very interesting discussion now i'm interested in that case you had to abandon because of the um vascular, you know, the presence of vessels around your tract. Okay. Now, um, what alternative did you use in that particular case to, to effect biliary drainage? And uh, going forward, you know, are there maneuvers that are available, you know, to try and, uh, you know, find out an area around that place that is not so, you know, is not uh, uh, obstructed by uh, vessels so that you can still do the procedure you wanted to do? Thank you very much. Yes, I do agree. Uh, the the most important thing is uh, to how to avoid the the intervening vessel. So if the in case the, the a lot of vessel in uh, in uh, in duodenum, we can change to uh, to do the EUS HES. Another option. <clears throat> okay. Thank you for. <clears throat> Nice discussion, and uh, oh, Doctor Ono. Okay, I, I we have the one question, Professor Jung. The final final question. Uh, sorry, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, uh, I have one question. Uh, uh, you uh, you perform USR RV uh, four cases, and uh, you approach. You approach uh, three cases uh, by ESCDS route and uh, one case uh, by ESHGS route. Uh, which route is the uh, uh, which which route is the best uh, for you uh, when uh, you do uh, 
when, when you perform is our boy. Thank you very much for your question. Very interesting. And uh, we usually uh, uh, start uh, the, the procedure in the duranum because of its reporting that is safer than uh, than uh, doing the EUS HES. So in, in case we fail uh, in the EUSC, uh, uh, EUS uh, rendezvous uh, fail in the uh, duranum, we change to uh, uh, to the EUS uh, HES. Oh, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> thank you everyone. So the, it's time to move the next presentation. Okay, this uh, the next presentation is uh, uh, performed uh, me from myself. Okay, so uh, oh, yes, it's good. I'd like to show share the my slide. <clears throat> oh, sorry, えっとこれもう一回共有取りましょうか。Uh, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and hello, everyone. So I am uh, Nao Fujimori from Kyushu University. So today I'd like to uh, talk about the uh, current status and the uh, new indication of US guided uh, transluminal drainage for post operative pancreas fistula. It's a, a relatively rare condition. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so as you know, the uh, this is a classification of Atlanta and uh, uh, pancreatic fluid collection PFC. Uh, was divided into four categories uh, according to the time course of progression and the presence or absence of necrosis. <clears throat> and uh, uh, within four weeks, the PFC is called APFC or ANC. And uh, more than four weeks, uh, pancreas should schist PPC and worm. And usually after four weeks, uh, we have to consider the drainage. And this is a uh, uh, pancreatic fluid collection. But how about POPF? Uh, POPF is meant uh, post-operative pancreatic fistula. And uh, still now, one of the most serious complications occurring after abdominal surgery. And uh, uh, you can see the uh, POPF the case. This is a day 15 after distal pancreatectomy. <clears throat> POPF occurred in pancreas head. And the contents of POPF, as you can see, are mainly liquid components. Uh, which is different from that of WOM. And the recent three, the EUS guided drainage, EUS guided transluminal drainage, EUSTD, is recommended as the first line treatment for POPF. But a timing of drainage is not yet determined. So today's agenda is the two, <coughs> I would like to two parts. And the one is the procedures and timing of ESTD for POPF. And the next is EUS guided pancreatic duct drainage. E we call this is USPD for refractory POPF. I think is USPD is a new method of US guided drainage for POPF. So this is a standard technique of ESTD <clears throat> and using plastic stents. In Japan, it's, uh, we use uh, both PS and metallic stents we can use. And the first three is a puncture of the fluid <coughs> using a 90 gauge needle. And the insertion of the guide wire is a O25 guide wire. And the next is a truck dilation and mainly using non cautery devices. Sometimes we use cautery devices. And the final procedure is a stent insertion. And plastic stent is mainly used a double pigtail shaped. And uh, sometimes, uh, I would like to show you to a metallic stand, rooming opposing stand. 
And uh, this is a very uh, recent case. Uh, I performed uh, this procedure uh, one week ago. POPF after distal pancreatectomy for insulinoma. You can see the small uh, hypervascular tumor in the pancreatic tail and the POD 12. Mm, you can see the fluid collection near the stomach. <clears throat> this is a video of, uh, sorry. Sorry. So, Okay, as you can see, POPF are main liquid components. We puncture POPF using 90 gauge needle and the contrast injection <coughs> to confirm the PF, POPF and the guide insertion. <coughs> and the insertion of catheter with double lumen. We usually use the, put the two guide wire. This is double guide method and the truck dilation with a balloon catheter. In this case, a uh, non cautery device. And finally, a uh, dark pig tail plus stent insertion. Maybe one uh, stent or uh, two stents. In this case, <coughs> we use the two stents. <coughs> and uh, after <coughs> uh, one week, you can see, uh, POPF is uh, resolved and the complete resolution of POPF is achieved. And, uh, but it's recently in Japan and uh, dedicated devices for USTD is developed and available also in Japan. This is a room opposing metal stents and uh, called hot axios. And uh, this device can be also be applied to POPF. <clears throat> I would like to show the video. Uh, I would like to show the case, huge post-operative, huge POPF. <clears throat> he was performed surgery and this is a pancreatectomy five weeks before. And uh, he's suffering from abdominal pain and uh, the size is POPF is rapidly increased. So we plan the USDD with RAMS. <clears throat> and uh, as the uh, same in the such uh, previous case, POPF are mainly liquid components. <clears throat> this is a cautery device and uh, uh, insert the device is very easy. And the distal flange of lambs is <coughs> deployed and pull back to the lambs to adhere the gastric wall. <coughs> this is endoscopic view. So large amount of the debris, so large amount of fluid, uh, you can see. <coughs> the very effective drainage. And uh, only just after one week, the uh, POPF is uh, uh, shrinked. And the patient was discharged uh, two or three days after. <clears throat> and I'd like to show the table and the pros and cons of plastic and metallic stent for POPF. So uh, plastic stent is uh, mainly used. Uh, it's very, because it's easily available uh, in the, any hospital and the low cost and the soft and the mobile, maybe uh, induce uh, reducing trauma to surrounding uh, organs. But it's uh, sometimes long procedure time compared with the metallic stents and a small diameter, maybe uh, <coughs> induced insufficient drainage. On the other hand, the LAMS metallic stent is a very simple procedure, but uh, it's very high cost and a large diameter uh, induced a rapid resolution of uh, POPF. But it's, uh, I, we have to uh, pay attention to the long, uh, uh, no, no, no. RAMS should be removed within three weeks uh, from some reports. 
because uh, uh, if I we insert the, <coughs> the lamps for a long time, maybe it is difficult to uh, remove or sometimes breathing. So um, theoretically or ideally, uh, I recommend uh, remove the lamps uh, within four weeks, three or four weeks. And uh, more <coughs> one disadvantage maybe is uh, type of POPF. Uh, the lamp, lamps insertion is required very large POPF. Also, uh, our clinician should consider either PS plus extent or lamps uh, select on case-to-case -case bias. Okay, so the timing of STD for POPF is uh, not <coughs> still determined. Uh, I'd like to show uh, our recent results. And this is uh, uh, the same uh, same content. Uh, maybe I previously uh, presented in this teleconference, fourth or fifth teleconference, and uh, <coughs> this is uh, published in uh, this year. So this uh, study is aim of this study is to elucidate the efficacy and safety of ESD for POPF, focused on early timing of drainage. <coughs> and uh, during the ten uh, about ten years. Uh, 30 patients uh, required the POPF, uh, <coughs> required drainage for POPF, and uh, 14 patients with early uh, within 50 days post operative POD, and the 60 patients is uh, rate ESTD. <coughs> um, I would like to show only uh, part of the results, and uh, this is a, a comparison between early and rate drainage. The clinical characteristics of the, these patients is uh, almost same, except for the infection <coughs> uh, with or without infection. Okay, but the uh, technical success or clinical success or the <coughs> procedure detail is uh, almost same. <coughs> so, as I said, clinical characteristics between both groups show no significant difference, but infection. Uh, instance of infection is uh, frequently occurred uh, in early drainage group uh, than late drainage group. But the clinical outcomes, including period of hospitalizations after ESTD, were also equivalent. So, and oh, sorry, this is a multivariate analysis uh, for factors influencing prolonged hospitalization after ESTD. In this market analysis, and uh, two factors, uh, timing of ESTD, uh, two factors, sorry, uh, simultaneous internal and external drainage, and the total number of procedures is more than one, is uh, our uh, factors. <clears throat> but the uh, timing of ESTD, uh, namely early or late drainage, it did not influence the length of host procedure hospitalization. <clears throat> so in this paper, uh, early US guided drainage is uh, safe and effective, maybe which is different from PFCs after acute pancreatitis. In the acute, after acute pancreatitis, I recommend uh, after a uh, US guided drainage uh, after four weeks. So, but is uh, indication is uh, infected PFC. So uh, when the if your POPF was infected, uh, we should consider the early drainage, I think. <clears throat> so the next topic uh, is the US guided and pancreatic duct drainage, USPD, for refractory POPF. It's a little rare, uh, relative rare condition, but in some case, uh, it's very useful drainage procedure, so I'd like to introduce. And the uh, new methods, maybe new methods of US guided drainage. So USPD, is the most challenging procedure of all interventional EUS because there are no dedicated devices and the patient is, has sometimes not sufficient MPD dilation and the guide wire manipulation is sometimes very difficult and that there are uh, potential serious, serious adverse events such as pancreatitis, breathing, and uh, pancreatic fistula. And uh, <coughs> USPD as a uh, like uh, presentation, Dr. Jun, uh, PTBD is an uh, alternative method of the uh, USBD, BD drainage. But is uh, USPD, we have no alternative method. Okay, so 
but is recently, mainly from the uh, high volume centers, reports uh, of USPD are gradually increasing. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> and uh, the main indication of SPD is a uh, recurrent acute pancreatitis in patients with uh, surgical auto anatomy, uh, including pancreatinectomy PD. You can see the schema of ESPD in the light. And uh, as I said, the main endoscopic treatment for POPF is EUSDD in the direct puncture fluid collection. And uh, there are a few reports of USPD for POPF. <coughs> Sorry. This is uh, this table shows uh, reports of USPD, more than three cases, and uh, since 2010, this 10 years. <clears throat> and the uh, main indication, as you can see, is uh, anastomotic structure. And uh, yes, in the literature, but uh, relatively high technical success and clinical success. Mm, I'm sorry. Okay, the <clears throat> reports and uh, the technical and clinical success is uh, over 80%. It's relatively high, but the complication rates, adverse events is also high, around the 20 to 3%. So, and uh, <clears throat> the aim of the study is to evaluate the safety and the efficacy of STD for POPF. So, my experience is only three patients, three patients with POPF after PD, pancreatinectomy, who underwent to SPD in a hospital uh, within two years. And uh, we <coughs> analyzed retrospectively the clinical characteristic and our procedure. And the uh, ESPD is performed under the approval of the, our review board of, <coughs> in this hospital. So uh, I'd like to show the procedure, of, a standard procedure of ESPD. Uh, just, like, uh, just like the US guided transluminal drainage, first three puncture using a 90 gauge needle and the contrast injection to check the uh, pancreas gland and the guide wire insertion, uh, mainly at O25 guide wire. But it's uh, uh, different from the USDD or ESBD. Track dilation of the USPD is very, something very difficult. So I prefer non cautery device, but sometimes I have to use a cautery device. And uh, mm, in Japan, and plastic stent uh, de <coughs> developed by Professor Itoi in Tokyo Medical Hospital, uh, plastic stent, IT stent is <coughs> available. So we mainly use this stent for USPD. And uh, I, in my opinion, this is a, these are recommended devices for ESPD. And then you can see the uh, very tapered chips, uh, such as ES dilator or cold REM in Japan. The characteristic of these devices is very slim and very slim. So uh, it, from uh, using these <coughs> devices, I can dilate it enough. And finally, the uh, insertion plastic stent. So I would like to show three cases. The first case is 75-year-old man underwent PD for this cervical cancer. And the POP occurred at the pancreatic anastomotic site and the percutaneous drainage was performed. But unfortunately, and during three months, uh, fluid collection, a uh, fluid collection was improved, but uh, during three months, the amount of drainage uh, continued, did not change. And uh, this digestive juice was greater than 200 milliliter per day. <clears throat> so this is a preoperative CT. And uh, you can see the distal bile duct, uh, bile duct cancer, and the uh, pancreas, it's very normal. 
and uh, without MPD dilation. It's a normal pancreas and called soft pancreas. So, and POP for occurred, uh, as you can see this figure. And uh, the surgeon uh, performed the percutaneous drainage first. But fluid connection, uh, fluid connection was improved, but the amount of percutaneous drainage uh, did not uh, improve. <clears throat> and the right side of the table is a contra injection from the percutaneous drainage and uh, described the pancreas duct. So the surgeon and I, we, we are gastroenter gastroenterologists and uh, uh, discuss and to perform the USPD for this condition. This is a video of USPD. The non MPD is uh, not dilated around two millimeter, uh, but the puncture using 90 gauge FN needle. So uh, in this case, uh, we <coughs> I use a physician controlled guide wire ma manipulation. Myself is uh, manipulated guide wire. And luckily, uh, we can insert the <coughs> uh, catheter and track dilation with a non cautery device. And finally, insertions of a uh, plastic stent. You can see the endoscopic view. So, <coughs> uh, summary of case one USPD was successfully performed on POD 19. And non dilated MPD was punctured with a 90H needle. A seven French PS was placed after track dilation with a non cautery dilator. The percutaneous drainage volume dramatically decreased from 200 to, 200 to 10 millimeter a day in a few days after this procedure. So, he was discharged within one week. So, uh, our surgeon, <coughs> our surgery group uh, reported this procedure as a novel strategy of US guided drainage pancreatic PD for uh, pancreatic fistula after uh, PD. Uh, it's published as uh, a pancreas. So uh, I'd like to show more two cases. And case two is a 72 year old female underwent PD for pancreatic cancer. This patient received a, a pancreatic gastrostomy and POPF occurred around river and spring. So first three, uh, we performed USDD <clears throat> and uh, from two sides, but the condition did not improve. So <clears throat> I, we performed the USPD on POD 95 and the slightly dilated MPD, a three millimeter was punctured uh, with a 22 gauge needle, but truck dilation is very, very difficult. But uh, finally, a five plus plastic stent was placed and which induced the resolution POPF. The final case <coughs> is a 46 year old male underwent PD for dual energist and breathing. He's suffering from breathing. So he, <coughs> we underwent PD. And but seven months, uh, post-operative course is non-remarkable and no complication, but seven months after PD, POPF with infection occurred at the anastomotic site and the percutaneous drainage was performed. And uh, on the CT, slightly dilated MPD, we can see. And the fluid collection was improved by percutaneous drainage, but it's as in the same case one, the, the amount of percutaneous drainage did not change. And the control injection from the percutaneous drain described pancreatic duct. So uh, we again uh, decided to perform ESPD. So this is a final video of the final case. <clears throat> a puncture using the 90 gauge needle <clears throat> and slightly dilated four or five millimeter pancreatic duct. So uh, puncture itself is not so difficult for these cases. And the insert is guide wire. <clears throat> but it's, uh, in this case also a cut uh, to track dilation is very difficult. So um, a cautery device was used. <clears throat> and uh, we added the balloon dilation. And finally, uh, successfully inserted the plastic stent. So summary of case three, the SPD was successfully performed on POD 274, very uh, long period. But the dilated MPD was punctured 90 gauge needle 
And finally, uh, same French PS was placed uh, with uh, a <coughs> drug dilation, a code 3 dilate, and balloon dilate. So the Parkinson's drainage volume is markedly decreased as in case one. I will show summary, summarize my <coughs> uh, procedure. And uh, you can see the, I, I showed three cases. All cases is uh, uh, normal pancreas and soft pancreas, okay? And the uh, previous drainage is a percutaneous drainage or ES guided drainage is not uh, sufficient for improvement of uh, patients. So I decided to perform ESPD, but it's a technically uh, sometimes difficult because the MPD is not dilated two or three meter and uh, there is no dedicated uh, dilated devices. So uh, sometimes case we call three <coughs> device, but it's very uh, dangerous, uh, I think pancreatitis or bleeding, uh, we are very afraid. <clears throat> okay. Okay, <clears throat> uh, this is the final answer, right? Uh, use guided drainage plays a significant role in the treatment POPF, but is uh, uh, still is, uh, mm, I have to some, mm, mm, uh, dedicated, I think dedicated devices are strongly needed to overcome the technical difficulty. Uh, maybe USPD, uh, maybe a treatment option for refractory POPF. Okay, thank you for kind attention. So, so I, I'm a uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Akira So from Kyushu University. I'm uh, I'm co-chair in this uh, US conference. So, do you have any question or uh, and do you have any hot discussion from any institution? Hi, Dr. Fujimori. Is that uh, Dr. Ku here from Malaysia? Uh, a wonderful presentation. Uh, I'm just wondering a few questions. Firstly, uh, not all of us have, has the IT plastic stands that you have. If uh, we do not have the IT plastic stands, what are the alternative stands do you suggest to put for, for USPD? I will thank you for cool. Long time no see. Uh, but it's very difficult uh, question, but I, I don't have much experience. And uh, in Japan, most cases I can perform the using uh, IT stand, but is uh, um, maybe usually plastic stand and the BDL plastic stand. I think it's uh, I can we can apply <coughs> these stands to ESPD, but is uh, in the in these cases I strongly recommend uh, uh, maybe cold three device and enough uh, sufficient truck dilation because uh, pancreas duct wall and pancreas parenchyma is very hard. Okay, so maybe some reports from Korea, uh, they performed uh, using ESPD for using a metallic stent. But is a metallic stent is not uh, used in, uh, in the case with a non-dilated MPD. So I recommend the plastic stent, video plastic stent. Ah, thank you for that. Um, uh, second question is, uh, I, think, I, I think you will, you, you will realize in one of your cases by puncturing a non-dilated PD is actually very, very difficult. Um, how do you ensure that the, the access to the pancreatic duct is uh, successful without, um, without prior to contrast injection? Because if you were to accidentally inject contrast and it extravasates into the uh, pancreatic parenchyma, you will obscure the endos endosonographic view and will make subsequent puncture very, very difficult. Uh, do you have any tips for that? Okay, uh, thank you for the very important uh, questions. I, I have uh, the same opinion uh, with you. Uh, there is no uh, ideal procedure, but it's uh, maybe three millimeter diameter. I, we can perform the USPD using 90 gauge needle, but uh, two millimeter or one millimeter, non dilated is very difficult. So uh, in that case, uh, usually we perform the 22 gauge needle, first three. 
And uh, in Japan, I'm sorry, it's, uh, it, it's available, and I don't know it's available in your country. We can use the uh, all uh, all one eight guide wire for the 22 inch needle. So first we perform the USB puncture using 22 gauge needle and insertion guide wire. But if the it is difficult, uh, 22 gauge needle puncture and the uh, uh, pull back. Uh, penetrate the pancreas duct. Uh, it's difficult to <laughs> explain. Uh, penetrate the uh, pancreas duct and pull back and insert the contrast injection and to dilate, to dilate the MPD. And then we change the 90 gauge needle. It, it is reported as an alternative method for non dilated MPD. Okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. And now uh, just one more final question regarding your uh, USTD. Uh, I, I, I see that a lot of your patients, you, done, you do it very early and it's, and it's very successful for POPF. I'm just thinking uh, on EUS, is there any features that you would actually look out for to, to ensure that the cyst is mature enough for you to do transluminal uh, drainage? Or are there features that you see then you would say that, oh, it is too early and then we, we should not perform USTD in POPF in such cases. Mm, okay, it's a, a little more, uh, another one more um, important question, important issue. Uh, I'm sorry, I have no definite answer for your question, but it's my experience and uh, not uh, PFC from the acute pancreatitis. And POPF, the surgeon said me, POPF is uh, surrounded by the stomach wall. So don't afraid puncture and don't afraid in such a guide wire or plastic stent. Surgeon said me, <laughs> but is um, in it is not definite. So in some Japanese hospital, and I my opinion. It's safe to perform the early USTD using a eight millimeter or ten millimeter diameter large large diameter. Is, I think it's safe. But in Japan, some uh, some hospital uh, say to use to insert the only uh, ENPD ENPD catheter or oh, five French or seven French and not dilate too much. It's it's a contra controversial. Hmm. But I, most case, I think <laughs> we can use uh, safely. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much for your answers. So, do you have any question? No. I have a question. Okay, Dr. Jun, please. Okay. Thank you very much for a very excellent uh, presentation. And. Uh, my question is uh, when and why you choose the the metal stand is instead of uh, the plastic stand for POPF. Mm. And the second question is uh, which is, which is the, the the best uh, best position, the best uh, place for monitoring in EUSBD. Mm. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jim. <clears throat> and the uh, first question is. Uh, uh, PS or metallic stent, mm, and uh, it's related uh, uh, the question of Doctor Ku. The it's maybe timing of his TD. The early drainage, uh, as uh, Doctor Ku says, the POPF is not maturized, and uh, without uh, capsulization. So for that case, uh, sometimes difficult to recognize by US. Uh, be by US guidance. So in this case, I prefer the plastic stent. But it's uh, 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 when the capsulation is uh, achieved and the large POPF, especially is more than one or two week, two months after, very easy to recognize and uh, uh, capsulation uh, wall, POPF wall or POPF is mature. So in that case, and the large enough, we choice we choose i i choose i prefer the metallic stand lamps for this patient maybe timing mm -hmm. but it's both stent is available 
I, I, I think. So, and the second question is uh, uh, side or puncture side of ESPD? Yes. Okay. It's, it's, yes. It's um, uh, another very important point and, uh, to achieve the clinical su technical success and clinical success. It's, um, Mm, I think is uh, body of the pancreas, mm, but it's, it depends on the US view. Mm, most difficult procedure is uh, for ESPD is puncture. So uh, may, many cases uh, from the, bod mm, the body to tail, mm, but I prefer uh, the puncture side is uh, puncture body to if you can see the uh, MPD, mm, mm, oh, sorry, <clears throat> I have no mm, definite answer, but mm, but it's a most important point is to success the uh, contra injection guide wire. So mm, it's preferable for stent insertion. Uh, tail duct, the site of tail is preferred, but is a uh, tail position is sometimes difficult to puncture because uh, MPD is not dilated, okay? So I recommend the body of the pancreas. pancreas. And uh, but is any position, I think it's uh, possible. The main, most important point is US view. And okay, I'm sorry, it's a not a good question, not a good comment. <clears throat> okay, and do you have any question? A chat from chat. From chat, it's uh, there is one uh, one question, and uh, on behalf of you, I'd like to oh, University Technology Mara M A R A, okay. Oh oh, please do uh, say please use uh, make your introduction self introduction. Show three and uh, make a question. Okay. Oh. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm I'm Teva. This is Ilham. We are from uh, University Technology Mara UITM for short from Malaysia. Thank, thank thanks for letting us join. Uh, maybe I can ask the question directly. Okay. Uh, uh, how long do you leave the plastic stand in for for POPF, and what is the long term treatment for these patients? Do you have to do surgery again, or is it conservative? Thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you. It's a good question. It's um, it's an also there is no definite answer, but in my experience, our all our university hospital experience, I recommend uh, at least uh, the half months. Uh, no, 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 half of a year, six months, and uh, to check the uh, recurrence of POPF. If there are no recurrence of POPF, we can easily to uh, pull back to move to remove the. Uh, plastic stent using the conventional uh, gastroscopy, okay? So, Dr. Fujimori, uh, in, the, in that six months, do you have to exchange the stent or just leave the one thing in there for the whole six months? Okay, thank you. Thank and you. Uh, if the, there are no recurrence of POPF, uh, only uh, we, we remove. And uh, as you say, the, most cases, uh, uh, we can um, remove the stent, only only remove. We have no experience of stent exchange, okay? Hmm. So, so uh, it's time to finish. So thank you very much for participating in this conference and uh, thank you for presentation from Dr. Jun or uh, Dr. Fujimori. So, and uh, do you have any information for next conference, Dr. Fujimori? Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, today is a uh, uh, fruit discussion. I appreciate all of you. And the uh, next present, next uh, conference will be uh, held in maybe April, four months after, after four months. So uh, maybe Tuesday and uh, Later, I will um, I will announce by US AS 
via email. The candidate is uh, April 19th or April 12th. Uh, so <clears throat> and please uh, make a reservation. And the next presenter, I would like to ask, oh, maybe Dr. Ku, University of Malaya. It's yeah. a ton of you. Is it yeah, possible? Yeah. yeah, no problem. Okay, thank you. So, uh, unfortunately, today is the uh, UI, University of Indonesia, uh, did not participate in this conference. So, but I'd like to ask them to perform the next conference. Okay. <clears throat> so, it's a time to finish the conference. Uh, please <clears throat> uh, meet again four months after. Okay. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor June. Thank you very much.